Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to some more China regional qualifier actions here for the for the TI6. I'm OD Pixel. I'm joined by Blades Casting, and uh, we are back this time round. Two new teams. I would say two new teams. One same old team. We're going to see IG Vitality again. This time up against Vici Gaming. And uh, we are well into the draft now, but Blaze, IG Vitality, they, uh, they got to pick themselves up after that last game, because that was not pretty. Yeah, it definitely was not, but I definitely think this team has potential. Like, yeah. if they can really address the issues that we saw in terms of early rotations and responses to the, the aggression from their opponents, uh, they definitely can do a lot better. Um, the C-Deck, I, I got to say that I feel that was a bit of a fluke. If this was, if it was an extended series instead of BO1, maybe the, the result could have been different. But as it stands right now, IGV, their scoreline does not look very good, being through almost halfway through the Chinese qualifiers for TI6 at this point. And they're going to be going up against a pretty tough opponent here. Vici Gaming uh, do are looking quite impressive here. Uh, I was looking back at some of their more recent games here, and uh, the big win for Vici is actually up against their own squad over VGR, but that was an extremely close game. In fact, one that they might not have... Uh, one out, if not for a, a very lucky glimpse. So, uh, I, by that notion, they're going to be picking up the disruptor here, and we'll see what Burner can do on that hero. But um, I, looking at the bans, I really like that they're banning out Siler's Terra Blade in Phase One. It shows that IGV realize and can pinpoint the threat that Vici Gaming can present if uh, enemy yeah. core in the carry position can go unmolested. And I can't remember when it was. It was, I think. A few months ago, I don't know what land it was. It was like a, a while, but a long time before everyone was starting to play terribly. I think Silent TB was the one that apparently in the China scene it was that was the hero they were scared of. You know, mm -hmm. you do not let Silent play his Terrorblade, otherwise you will lose. Um, so and I think you know now in a in, in kind of a, a time where where everyone is is rocking the TB, you, you certainly, you know, as you said, you do not want to get uh, a Sila, uh, the, the chance to grab his hands on that hero. Um, but elsewise, other, other picks so far, nothing too out of the ordinary. Uh, I guess a little bit interesting to see uh, a relatively early drow ban, uh, but I guess something that yeah. well, Vici Gaming uh, can pull out a pretty strong drow strat now and then. Yeah, I think there's some good potential for it, and yeah. Beastmaster is a good hero to couple it with because he's got a lot of control that is very physically intensive, so you can just really focus on, on that side of things. But all the same, uh, I think they're just going to continue to ban out Siler heroes. I think that yep. that's going to be the tone they're really setting here. Is they want to make sure that Siler doesn't get uh, the, the hero that he's most comfortable with in terms of farming out the map. Uh, they also banned out RTK's Tide, but I really don't think you want to be banning out all the RTK he's heroes. He's got you'd rather old. ban Silas, you'd say. Yeah. Yeah, than RTK. Okay. So yeah, another yeah. carry ban. Uh, that that means the Axe is going to be an option, obviously, the Beastmaster. Is still most likely going to be that offlane position, though. It definitely suits ROTK style more than uh, the Vici Gaming support players. Um, burning, he likes to get greedy a bit, but usually it just means picking up like an extra hand of Midas or something like that. It doesn't mean that he's going to be going for like a full jungle. And Silas just like enough of the bands. So I'll just get the carry pick for myself here and now. It's going to be the Weaver, which you actually have seen in the hands of uh, EIGV as well. So you know, as we're on that previously, and both teams really understanding the limitations of that hero, Ten but here I feel like IGV have to start drafting some pretty hard lockdown. Um, Definitely. Uh, I mean, some silence in general is going to bode well. Uh, the Riki is still VG in the pool, but with an Earth Spirit filling the same role, it's unlikely to be picked up. Yeah, and there, there's a bit more lockdown picture there. The Vengeful Spirit, also ideal in the sense that you don't want VG Gaming having a chance of grabbing that against the bat. And yeah, just a, a couple of more bits of point target because you know before that Venge pick, if that Weaver was getting a Lincoln's, no way really the bat could could have much hope of controlling him. So so a little bit more lockdown, exactly what IG Vitality who were looking for, and yeah, just not giving VG Gaming the chance to get the Venge themselves. They they'll pick themselves up at the Slardar here, and I uh, uh, talk to me here. So how are we laning this? So right now it does, did look like the Beastmaster was going to be going into the off lane early on because it's an RTK yeah. standard, but here we do have a slaughter pick that yeah. most likely will fill that role instead. So you could be looking at a support babysitting disruptor, the Beastmaster jungle, and then you can off lane the slaughter with the Weaver safe. The only other way you can really make this work is if you're putting either the Weaver or the slaughter in the mid lane, which is not very common, but CTY does more bizarre things okay. with, with that, uh, his uh, decision making. Yeah, so that, that, that would be fun to see. I, I guess as well, one of the things about the Weaver, if it's in the Weaver safe lane, because you've got the Shikuchi, you know, you, you can run that lane with just one support. You know, you, yeah. you, you don't, you're not in too much threat. 
and you know, something, something like a disruptor, very strong support at the moment, and something as you, know, as you said, we're just seeing so much play from. Uh, it could it could certainly work out. DK, um, I guess in a sense, this, this is a great pick because yeah. uh, Vici Gaming already working with the minus armor from uh, from the bugs and the amplify. DK, he's not going to care too much about that. And with him and Venge, you've already got yourself uh, you've got a pretty good push coming out now. Yeah, and it's another Fran favorite. Yeah, uh, right now, me. he's 11-5 and five in the past month of the hero. It's his second most played <laughs> hero after DP, which, okay. of course, is banned in the second phase. So it's just the, the kind of hero they likes to play. is something that pushes, something that can build it, a lot of durability. And it doesn't really care Radiant about the swarm team. and the amp damage. I mean, yeah. obviously, it'll affect any hero negatively, but the JDK is the one that can really bolster his armor so much that he can shrug off most of the, the damage incoming. Um, still, the last ban here is going to be the Sven. Coming out from VG Gaming, they they really don't want to have to deal with the war cry on top of that. They really are looking to exploit the negative armor duo here. Um, I think that's why a couple teams run so frequently the Weaver Alchemist. Um, the Acid Spray Swarm has been really strong, but uh, obviously that's a pick that would have come out a lot earlier in the draft. Instead, we have IGV going for the Slark route, and obviously has some potential, but uh, I feel like one big issue that IGV had in their previous game, where they obviously had the Slark, yeah. was tempo, was building the, their laning phase and, and getting out of it with uh, you know kill advantage. Slark is a great hero when you can get a couple good items on him, at least the Shadow Blade, but remaining. before that, he is really vulnerable, and I feel like Vici Gaming could kind of try to run over the lanes the way c Deck did. Yeah, and I, I, I feel, I'm feeling as well, the Weaver. You know, this is not necessarily a hero you want to be playing uh, a, a, a Slark against, in the, in the sense that, you know, Slark's never going to be really able to kill that Weaver on his own. He's going to need to have, you know, the lockdown from the Bat, the Venge, or the DK. Mm -hmm. And into a Disruptor, too. The, yeah. the Beast Master yeah, you can kind of deal with, but yeah. Disruptor is insanely good against Slark, and uh, that means you're even considering going BKB yeah. against Weaver, Slaughter, Beastmaster. Three very physically intensive heroes. So I really love the the balance that Vici Gaming have found here. Um, they are going to be running the support Beastmasters, so HYM. Okay, um, into the jungle. I, I did watch a few of Vici Gaming's games in the OVA qualifiers, and they have run Iron Talon, Beastmaster a couple times for, for HYM. So uh, he seems pretty comfortable with it. Um, they, hell, they even did that in the middle of major qualifier. They they had a majority of their games where it's HYM, Beastmaster, Jungle. It's just because it's so, uh, it's harder for the lo the more sporadic lower tier teams in the open quals to really contest it. But they are going to be pulling out out here against a high caliber team, and the question is whether or not IGV can do anything about it. And they got the air spirit, they got the battle rider. They have a few ways to get into that jungle, but whether or not it's worth the time and effort is the another question entirely. I remember, yeah, this timber still pick. I don't know, for me, this, this this seems pretty Five ideal. You know, you, you're going to be up against the DK in the mid lane. You, that matchup, you, you, you're going to have a final time. And, of course, another hero that can cause a lot of issues for the Slark when he's trying to jump in and out. And uh, the question kind of goes again, is, is the damage actually going to be there to take down a DK, uh, to take down a Timbersaw when he gets a certain point? You know, CTY could certainly see himself having a lot of free reign running around these fights. So That's uh, going to be interesting to see. I mean... IGV, how, how did they play this one a little bit differently? What, what, what were, were kind of the, the most glaring mistakes you felt in that last game we saw from IG Vitality that, that they may try and play a bit differently here? Well, one thing is they didn't contest the offlane whatsoever. The Beastmaster did not even look at the lane until about four or five minutes in. That was only because the creep wave pushed it out. Immediately thereafter, he's back farming a, a jungle nearby and essentially just used the lane as a, a crutch to leech on. And uh, the tower still dropped extremely quickly. The Glinks had absolute free farm. And then they didn't even keep good tabs on him. Uh, as he rotated away. Um, we won't have the same level of aggression from Siler as Weaver, but there's still going to be a decent uh, bit of movement in the, the mid game, in the early mid game. So I think getting in July involved in the lane more directly is going to be an important thing, and the, the Earth Spur is actually going to be the key for that. Dog fights. He really didn't get to talk about him much last game because yeah. he, there really wasn't no, much. Nice, not in much to of, talk up from him, yeah. yeah. There just wasn't really much that he could do in that yeah. game. But Dog fights has actually been one of my favorite support players to watch over the past six or seven months. He has a, a very active play style. He actually used to play for VG Gaming's v, uh, potential squad, VGP. Oh, okay. And uh, <gasps> essentially, he and another support constantly went for these very active roaming duos like they had rubik night stalker uh, as one of their favorite openers in a draft where they would just always just find a smoke play where they could telekinesis avoid you down and just find kill opportunities now he's playing the earth spirit which is a little bit more skill intensive but if he can find the same level of success with it in the early game here he's opening with, with the orb of venom 
I, I really do think that he can set the tone in the laning stage in favor of IGB. I mean, talking about the laning stage as well, how, how much do you feel it will affect VG, VG Gaming, the fact that they are running this Beastmaster jungle? As you said, they've done it before. Uh, but, I mean, th this game, IG Vitality, are they able to do anything to punish this, this essential greediness? The thing that I like about the draft and, and making it work is that although they are greedy for HYM, yeah. the other heroes don't really suffer much for it. Uh, the Timber Saw is very survivable and escapable. The Weaver, the same. Is very If the there's too much pressure being put on the lanes, they just back off a little bit. They get slightly less farm, but the Beastmaster is making up for it. Um, the Slaughter is a little bit different, but RTK is a very renowned offlaner. He's been in this situation time and time again. And while he probably feeds a few more kills than most of the other offlaners, uh, he always is in a comfortable position in spite of it. So. I really do feel like generally what you're looking at here is yes, the greed will hurt their lanes, but they've already kind of sh shielded themselves for it. They're ready to, to take that hit for the greater good for the team. And in that sense as well, because you are in this jungle, does this mean that we're unlikely to really see many kind of movements around the map from Vici Gaming? I guess at the moment you're looking to burning on his disruptor. Yeah, but stati their lanes yeah. are very static, very predictable, yeah. but at the same time, very resolute. I mean, uh, over to, on the side of IG Vitality, could the same be said, or, or do you think we'll see uh, a, v a very mobile kind of game from, from uh, I mean, the Earth Spirit? I mean, as you said, dog fights, you, you talk to him up. What, what, what can he do this game to really impact the laning stage? Is he just going to keep his attention towards the top lane? Can he do anything in the mid lane? Well, first he needs to get his level 2. That's yeah. very, very important. Along with that, some sentry wards could do them pretty well if they're looking to hit up on the Weaver. I mean, you can look at that Timber Saw, absolutely, but you have to use your silence and your stun very carefully. For now, he's just kind of getting some good vision down, and he's starting to draw on the map where he knows that the Beastmaster's got to be occupying himself. Um, I've seen a couple of HYM's jungle patterns where he actually intentional, intentionally suicides to neutrals, right okay. when he gets a certain item, like uh, the Talon or Talon and Shield, and uh, then he kind of goes from there. But either way, they know, they've watched replays, they know where HYM is moving, and they're just going to try to, you know, at least pressure the top lane while he is far from it. So far at the moment, the uh, the mid lane matchup, I guess I kind of expected it is favoring CTY and it's Timbersaw. 17 for 1 against the 10 for 2 of OP. Oh, it's going to be a first blood here as Tyler is able to dive just enough under tower here and is going to be able to finish off with one more Geminate there. He did he has to swarm out, does get just enough damage to bring that bat down. And it does seem like uh, the Earth Spirit was a little bit too late to the party, maybe trying to get him, bait him into. Uh, overextended position perhaps uh, and it just obviously did not work out he did not have uh, get the ability to contribute and, and that was quite unfortunate in the meantime uh, we do see RTK did suicide neutrals completely intentionally uh, to get hit full HP and get uh, back out on the map uh, this is I mean it's already a, it's a strong start here for, for the side of UG Gaming I guess one of the pluses for IG Vitality is that the Slark he, he's having a pretty good a good lane here. It's certainly a better lane, it seems, than he did in the game beforehand uh, against CD. Um But at the same time, RCK finding the levels, just unable to slow down the slark, but that's just because of this uh, the super vengeful spirit that's doing its best to keep the distance between the Could two. Could be bad for CTY here. A lot of stun potential coming out, but uh, they don't actually go ahead and pop the Dragon Tail. If you do the Dragon Tail and, and follow like that, you can definitely go for a double uh, sip and, and go for the Breathe Fire. Top lane. Bats in trouble again. Glimpse back in July. And... Ooh, dog fights will come through. I don't think you can find anything with Tell. I think this man's dead as well. Silo. He's got the fairy fire. It might be enough to, to keep him up. In fact, they won't even go for that la final right click to try to bring him down. Another kill for Silo, though. I mean, yeah. you, you can't let this happen as the bat. I mean, th at this point, do you not just say, right, I'm going jungle? I mean, you want you tend to do that, right? But that's yeah. exactly what we saw from in July previously, and we saw exactly how that turned out with Rabbit getting absolute free farm. I do think that there's value in contesting, but if you're feeding kills away, it's, it's probably doing more harm than good. So, um, at least for now, he's going to turn his attention to the jungle. In the meantime, though, the Disruptor, another neutral deny. Really just uh, want... They're they really being active about e the fact that they get a very short respawn timer at low levels and, of course, <laughs> spending their gold before they die. Uh, look at this RTK rotation mid. Uh, that, you know, they did not expect that. He just waltzes across the Radiant Jungle. Just wraps around a crush, allowing the, you know, the Shackram to do its work. Yeah, uh, that's, that's just how it play. Really don't have a good handle on that part of the map. I mean, eventually yeah. it does the bottom rune at like four minutes maybe, but 
uh, other than that, like the Observer Wards are all in towards HYM's jungle, and as such, it's actually quite opportune for Siler to just make a move like that, and <sighs> TK, not a hero that you want to be losing at that stage. I'm also going to point out, this is probably one of the worst games to get the infused raindrops. Like, the, there's so much pure damage coming out from the Timber Saw, you're not really going to be uh, t mitigating a lot of damage. You'll take, you'll, it'll break the Whirling Death, and that's about it. Other than that, there's so much physical and pure damage that you're still going to be very squishy. But in, speaking of that, CPY actually gets caught out here, and uh, a 3v1 play enables the first kill for IGB. Yeah, I'm making uh, just far too greedy there, going in. And uh, with the build, of course, as well. And uh, not a single point into the timber chain, so not, 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 that, not that that would have saved him there. But uh, he's he's going all in with a full aggro. And that time, that play biting him. Biting himself back in the foot. But uh, as we've got to remember, you know, they are still winning the set again, 3v1. And they do still have this Beastmaster in the jungle, who, who's now level 6. <laughs> so the momentum is certainly there for a team that only have 4 heroes in the lane. Yeah, overall, like, you just see the natural experience curve here. Uh, almost 1,500 favoring the side of Vici Gaming the early on, but then, you know, getting a kill or two will bring it back. So it's going to be a really intense duel coming out here between Yuno and RTK, but uh, RTK doesn't have another crush, and Yuno is able to Shadow Dance right on top of him for a big kill in that safe lane. But now OP ran into trouble here, gets caught out, and it's another 3v1 this time favoring Vici. Yeah, so you, you get a kill on the off laner, but you lose your mid elsewhere on the map. It's yeah, another trade that the Vici game and they're going to be happy with. And more and more space given to CT1 on the Timbersaw. He's, he's getting a lot done here. But at the same time, so is Yuno. Uh, it feels like a lot of this game is going to be on the back of how well this Slark can play. And uh, Yuno's certainly getting the, the, the farm at the start to kick start. Uh, that kind of momentum that he wants to find. So, C2 was, I, I think, going to be a, a big player in the next few fights. He's yeah. gotten himself up to level 8 now, finally has a Zebra Chain for some good mobility, and he's got a lot of mana to play around with here. So, I do feel that, like, in one of the next big skirmishes, it's going to be a, either him going down very quickly to a chain stun, yes. or him just tearing things apart and, and being a really big source of damage for Vichy King early. Yeah, I mean, as we saw, even with the three heroes killing him, like, they all got fairly low. He gets a few of the uh, the, the chakrams choked out and a whirling death, and suddenly, you know, the, this the cause and, and the supports of IGV are are melting. Gonna hear the dragon tail here on to CTY, but burning is here as well, trying to zone him off of the rune. But now we're actually gonna be seeing Silar come in and drop some damage as well. Nice little boulder smash coming through, but the primal roar is gonna be uh, the thing that seals Fran's fate. Super comes in from the sideline, nice little magic missile, but burning still gonna be burning down to in July as uh, the Batrider actually getting the last word in this fight. Gonna be able to burn down two heroes before getting Silar. a lot of pressure from CTY. And he's Silar. getting so much though. That he's cleaning up so hard. I mean, they do lose two, but the fact that he should be able to get this one more Shikuchi, he's going to go for it. And he's got it. Silar in that fight. 4-0-2. I mean, again, it's it looked kind of hopeful for IGV. They, 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 I don't know if it was worth going back in on that battle rider, because at the end of the day, feeding more kills to the Weaver. That's... I don't know, it's just continuing this flow of the game. But the thing to know, even though Weaver's getting himself involved with the kills, because of the farm of Juno and the patterns he's managed to keep to, there are... He's actually ahead in net worth this slot. Yeah, and that's uh, obviously quite impressive. The fact that he hasn't, yeah. he's only been involved in the one kill. Yeah. Well, uh, Silo was take 4 0 and 2, but he has stayed up there, and he's obviously had a much better start than we saw in the previous game. He got his shutter dance at a good time, got the solo kill on the Slardar, and just kept farming. And that's the big thing here, is he, he's going to continue to be involved. And this is a nice little item progression that uh, Jocelyn and I got to talk about a little bit, but it's uh, kind of a newer thing on the Slark. Um, you use Dark Pack a lot to farm okay. with AoE spells, or as an AoE spell, so just Iron Talon, the biggest creep, while you're farming, it actually, well, it seems like a small change, but it actually is a quite significant uh, efficiency increase. Yes. Um, I think we, yeah, we're seeing that in the numbers, without a doubt. And he's going to have this, well, just a, just a very close to being a 10-minute Shadow Blade. That's, that's really going to be quite something for you, know, as he hits level 11 as well, so already with that extra regen movement speed. He's, he's going to be a hard one to take down. So, yeah, it, I, I'm just excited to see what this slot's going to be able to get done and if it's going to be enough to kind of bring back this this early game that uh, Vici Gaming have got the edge in and IG Vitality have, have started to fall slightly behind it. 
Sharpshot's gonna get the Tome of Knowledge down. That's gonna be putting him up to level 6 here. I'm really wondering how effective his Static Storms are gonna be this game. Because if Burning is on point with this ultimate, he can do so much. I mean, the, obviously the Earth Spirit has a really hard time against the, the Silence of the Slark. Will struggle against it as well. Uh, positioning is more important against the Bat Rider, but uh, up top, Siler actually going to be pulled back by the lasso. Yeah, and a fair bit of damage as well, and it's not going to be enough though. He gets the time lapse out, and the backup has turned up. Vici Gaming moving in hard. We'll see if there was a find any kills as they chase down the Bat Rider. Looks like they will get themselves away. Oh no, the glimpse was there. Bring it in, July back. And that, that's painful for IGV. It looked like a perfect opening. The Earth Spirit Silence into the lasso, but they, they just didn't quite have the damage to kill the Weaver. It was so close. He dropped extremely <laughs> low in the process there, but HYM comes in with the Roar to bail him out. And a uh, nice little synergy between the Swarm and the Glimpse. You're not going to be attacking that little beetle while you're in retreat, so that gives them the vision they need to yeah. pull the bat back. And yeah, this bat is going to have another d delay on his blink dagger. This is now 1 and 4 on Angelai's Bat Rider. It, it's a definitely a worse start than I, I've ever seen for him. Yeah, and I think as well, you know, not just the Swarm, you, you look at the lineup, they've got so many ways to set up for that glimpse. Amplify, mm -hmm. the Hawk, you know, the vision game is, is brilliant for Vici. Absolutely. It's, the synergy is absolutely there. And as, as we're seeing, you know, just with these pickoffs each and every time, nine for four. And Disruptor, you know, he's been involved in six of them with these glimpse plays. So burning, just being in the right place at the right time so far, and it's, it's meaning big things. And yeah, the Slark is still at the top, but the rest of the cores, there is, there's quite a difference. We're actually going to be seeing him move to, uh, down bottom for Vici Game. I actually did not expect this kind of a rotation at, at this stage in the game. Uh, the Slark's obviously not there, so the Slark is farming top. Usually you look to address the enemy core, and they go to the enemy safely because they want this tower. They don't have Necros, but they have the boar. And they've got RTK Radiant's hunting and tower. looking to dive. In July stays far enough away that they won't go for that play, but they're still going to be chipping away at this tower. And IGV in the meantime look for a flank from the west. This is, I mean, let's see how this leads in for IGV because yeah, they don't have the slow with them. I'm going for get the science onto one. Roar immediately for H Ram on stock places gets glimpse back as well, but the damage is there. Lasso onto RTK, so they'll finally kill him in return with the timber saw. He's just doing so much here. CTY taking down a second. Shadow answering you know, looking for a bit of a cleanup. Finds two. They are gonna get HYM as well. Now Silent CTY left to deal with the slot, you know, running low on mana. We'll see if he can get himself out, Aww. but the burst, the control is there. They lose the Slark as well, and now OP all on his own. Silar doesn't have the time lapse, but CTY, I wondered if he was going to go in and try and tank it up. But it looks like they're going to play it safe. But again, another fight where IGV come out on bottom, and Silar yet to die continuously. 7-0-4 as the, as the farm continues, and, and now he is just back on top. Only slightly, but... You know, toe to toe with the Slark, who's having a very, very good amount of space. It's such a hard fight to take against a Timber Saw in that jungle, in that kind of environment where he can just kind of bounce around and do so much damage with his spells. Yeah, they just didn't have the wherewithal to, to fight up against it. A really good opener there, roaring uh, the Earth Spirit taking down quickly so that he can't get uh, his line stuns and silences out. Because if he actually. Hey, silences out the timber saw or, or just helps out in terms of his aoe disable then I, I feel the fight goes a lot differently but as it stood their only control really was brought from the bat rider and it just wasn't enough uh, the fight went to shambles very quickly and resulted in a triple kill for siler now actually topping out net worth on this seven zero and four weaver oh, look at this oh the glimpse back on to op he's controlled in the field the burst not quite enough though they're gonna bail a little bit scared of IGV coming back in with a defensive play. So we're unable to kill off the DK there. And, uh, oh, you know? Maybe seeing if you can try his luck up top, see if he catches the HYM. But uh, HYM hiding in the trees. Yeah, he's going to be fine for the time being. And uh, has pretty much got that level one net quits. Not as necessarily the quickest Necro we've seen on a Beastmaster, but by no means is it a bad mm -hmm. timing. Yeah, I mean, if you consider the fact that he invested absolutely nothing in terms of lane yeah. uh, farm for this Beastmaster to come online in this capacity, very good timing for him. And yeah, he's going to be able to just do so much uh, in terms of push and fighting. Uh, how, how quickly can they rush, for example? When you got the Weaver um, building up one, just one damage item, the Slaughter with the amp damage, and then of course that Beastmaster with the full attack speed aura, as well as those Necros. 
There we have Avicii Gaming wrapping around towards the mid. They want to kick something off. Burning, he doesn't have a static storm for this fight. But CTY, he's, he's going to be ready to go ham. That might be a bit of a mistake. I really feel like in this position, like you, you should just wait the extra 10 seconds for the static storm. They wanted to be subtle about it. The, the key to smoke the seed is the deception part. But all the same, they're going to make the jump here on mid. Yeah, dog fights. It's going to be falling. They've got a roar. But swap save is there. Super. Trying to do his best to help out. The static storm's down. The CTY takes down one. Starts to move across. They're looking at OP. Can they kill this DK? Looks like they can't. They've actually lost two of Ichi Gaming. And maybe losing more as well. CTY to fall. And I think, as you said, an unnecessary fight that Ichi Gaming looked for. And uh, it's pretty bad for them, though. They do still... Lose a second as the be as the the bat rider will fall, but nonetheless, a trade that IGV will be uh, will be over the moon with. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the, the position they were on the map, they really did need to kind of at least take an even trade. So IGV gonna be able to to work with that one there. And uh, yeah, it just kind of got really spread out. That, yeah. Although it did look like they were about to break down dogfights without him getting anything off, he lived just long enough to actually get hit, his full combo to two heroes. So not too shabby from him, contributing uh, in a significant way. And more importantly, just the way that IGV were able to spread that fight out to, to take targets bit by bit. I mean, even the slaughter. Uh, barely escaped with his life there. So, yeah, just uh, uncontrolled aggression does cost the Timbersaw a lot of bloodstone charges, and they're going to go for that safe route. I was talking about uh, how quickly they can rush on. We'll, we'll test it here. And we'll see if uh, IGV do anything about it. I mean, they could certainly send the Slark over scouting. Oh, they are grouped up. Maybe they will start to make a movement over. They're going to look for a, a smoke there, then, between the tier 1s and the tier 2s. Yeah, that scan's a little early, but it looks like it'll be just in time for the rush to fall. As, uh, they're just taking it quickly now. Yeah, as you said, the speed far too much to be hurting. To Danny, with that rush, and of course with the Aegis, going the way of CTY. So the second life on the Timbersaw. It's going to be absolutely huge. And IGV, what have they got coming out here for the DK? So BKB done on the Dragon Knight. And of course, was was just done as well as slots. They got double BKBs on the cores now, and they, they, and they want to fight by the looks of it. Yep. So we're gonna see the smoke moving out here. It's gonna be really important who they lasso and how quickly they can get it, uh, pull them out of position. Because there's like a roar on the bat rider right when the lasso comes out. It's almost useless. Like it just delays the fight. Yeah, it looks like they just can't find the jumping. CTY is fronting the lines, and uh, yeah, they oh okay. There's your lasso on to RTK. The glimpse is there. RTK, he's actually going to survive this one. The BKBs have come out from IG and they're starting to move forward. Looking to get the backliners off first. They'll take down Disruptor. HYM and CTY falling low as well. But look at the burst from this timber ripping oh. through the side of the IGV and he's not done. CTY coming across, takes down another triple kill for your timber saw. And CTY cleaning up there and it was needed as well because Vici did lose three. But CTY and Sylar again surviving 707 on this Weaver. Very, very nice plays from CTY though, though, getting exactly the amount of damage he needed to. They just can't invest any spells into him. I mean, in doing so, they would be just trying to essentially fire into a sponge that could soak up all the damage. And yeah, it, he had the Aegis too, so there's less, even less incentive to go on him. But in that process, he gets free reign, he gets to put out so much damage and gets himself a triple kill to get those bloodstone charges back up. A little cheeky attempt to <laughs> take down the, the tier 1 tower <laughs> is successful and, you know, will get a little bit of pocket change on his way out. Um, if you're Ichi Gaming now, what, 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 what's the game plan here? Do you, do you need to go... Are you in a hurry this game? Hmm. Is, there, is there a timer on you compared to this Slark DK lineup or are you confident in the, the way that the Weaver and the, the Timbersaw will scale up? I do think that you have a really good fight at all yeah. stages of the game for Vici because of like the way that Slaughter or Disruptor initiate together or the Beastmaster sets up uh, a target priority. But at the same time, IGV's cores do scale really hard. The Batrider can be very scary as the game prolongs and, and that Slark can be extremely dominant with a full six or seven slots. So yes, I do think that Vici want to at least control the map and ta start taking tier two towers in the near future. They don't have to end the game by a certain timer on the clock, but tier two towers and general map control is a must. You can see AVG Gaming just, just going to have this tier two push. And IG, they are TPing over, but 
I don't know if they'll be able to do anything about this. Tower falling relatively quick. They, they maybe want to try and jump in, but CTY's positioning is going to force them to have to initiate on him first. And they'll get it, and they'll move forward. They've, I don't know. That'll be it. So IGV looked prone to fight there, but just CTY, as you, as you said earlier, you, you don't want to be jumping in first on this guy. Nah, it's, it's a little difficult. So, um, we'll see. This age just probably go without... Uh, much value, yep. uh, unfortunately. It's the, they, they got the Roche, they got the benefits from it through Golden Experience, but end of the day, he's not going to be able to really make the most of that second life. Still, tier 2 tower down on bottom it is definitely continuing to, to keep momentum in, in the direction they want it to be. Um, but stacks are coming up from IGV, That's and of stats. course the, the Red Dragon form is going to be able to farm that up. Uh, oh. Oh, really? oh, but on I the... I got kicked. <laughs> Coming back. But yeah, back. yeah, both sides have got the status going, haven't they? Yeah, and this is a little bit less yeah. simple to, to farm, but thanks to the swarm, thanks to the desolator, they're still going to be able to do it. Um, they would prioritize any black dragons if those existed, but it looks like they got pretty lucky on the spawns, and they don't have to deal with the armor aura. So clearing this out uh, a little slowly, but still very cost effective. I mean, what, what a side I get this game after this kind of Lincoln's death so cool. Hmm. Does he need a BKB as well, or? More damage is in, in order. I don't think that you're actually going to need the BKB. No. Like you've already got your Lincoln's Dezo, which is the core of this game, 100%. I mean, surely so the Air Spirit's still quite annoying. His silence is in his Yeah, I mean, control. there's definitely a lot that, that can be a nuisance, but I, I don't. I think more damage is still at this point. Like if you look at how he's balanced his de defensive and offensive potential, I feel like he's going to be able to survive long enough to get a time lapse unless he makes a mistake. So I do feel that he still wants more, to go for more damage here. And um, we've seen crit, like Daedalus, and obviously the butterfly, uh, that are two really good options here. I would personally say butterfly, but, uh, and Siler definitely is known for picking that item up more than most other people. But no matter what he picks up, I mean, I'm sure it's it's going to be the right choice. This guy is a very ex experienced agility core player. And then we have it there, so CCY uh, is just expiring. And Nick for free now done an HYM. And uh, just look, look at this, RGV. Coming across on the map, they want to fight. You know, leading. He's got a gem too. Oh, they could have had an opening on to the Weaver, but instead it's going to be on to Yuno. But he gets the dark pack off of the roar. Oh man, this is not necessarily the fight they want to do unless CTY can get the burst through. But they've already lost one. They are going to lose a second here. Let's see what they can do in response. Silo getting himself back out. Now moving back in. CTY looking at Super, but he's going to get taken down as well. They do find two in return. But Burning trying for the TP out. He's not going to... Oh, he did. Wow. Oh, only just making it out. But he didn't still. even magic wand. He, he calculated that. He's like, I don't need the extra HP. Let's go. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. But still, a tremendous fight for IGV. Another kill in the timber. Yeah, he has a fast respawn now, yeah. but now he's back down to eight bloodstone charges as well. And they're going to turn this into at least a glyph, if not a little bit of chip damage on the towers. So another really good fight for IGV. And, oh, uh, yeah. So it shows how aggressive Yuno can get when he's got the, the right tools. He's got going the, oh, yeah. the Silver Edge gem, which allows him to... Because of Shadow Dance, you always know if you're being seen. Uh, with Because of the gem, you can always find out the Weaver. And then there's no way that you get caught off guard in terms of popping your BKB or your Shadow Dance. So in yeah, this case, it's a Dark Pact into Roar. But I was going to say, it's, it seemed a bit, a bit of a mistake of the Beastmaster to drop that down straight away. It's, it's just so hard to get the Roar into the slot. Mm -hmm. you, you have to wait until... You've seen him use the spell at least once. Because yeah. half the time, with the, with the cast animation of the Roar, if he's got the vision, he's going to get the dart packed off. That echo save is up for him, so, so I would say at this point that Power Spike has tipped in favor of IGV significantly. I would say the Slark is much more powerful than the Weaver. Now, obviously, like you mentioned in the draft, it's hard for him to go directly onto his uh, nemesis there, but all the same in terms of killing off the back line, the Slark is going to be a lot better at it. Oh, and he's come up here, Silo, but immediately, I mean, surely, they knew the Slark had a gem. That was... Uh, I would argue that the, the, there's no certainty of that. He hasn't de right. anything, and yeah. uh, it's hard to click on that bugger when he's all dancing That's around. That's true. But, I mean, they'll know now. They'll know now for sure. And uh, here we have, in July, looking for more blood as... Yeah, this game, IGV. They seem to have stepped it up a lot from uh, from the performance that we saw just now, and it's looking pretty good. They, they, they just got out of the laning stage. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Like this is what I expected from my GV in the game against C deck. The problem is they never got traction. They never really got the chance to use their their strengths, and their strengths is 
taking good farm on Yuno and applying pressure across the entire map. This is something that I thought, even with Vichy Gaming's early kills on Siler, that we might not even see this game because the, the mo mo momentum was yeah. against them, but they are turning it absolutely, and they're going to be opening up this again slot. here onto our. He's just so fat at this stage. I mean, yeah, we talked about how Silo's playing, he's not dying, but the fact is, the Slark's just getting ahead, and as the game goes later and later, Slark is just much more of a reliable character. Yeah, and he just he controls the map so much better. Like, at this time point in time, I think actually the Beastmaster might have to invest in a gem of his own, and that's only to counterpoint, that's only to, like, run from the hero, practically, as soon as you see him. It's not gonna actually... Uh, give you that many opportunities now that Slark has BKB. Like, he has all the perfect items to really be as active as he wants to and, and still disengage freely. Like, the worst case scenario is he has to pop BKB and run. Uh, as long as he has Shadow Dance up, he's able to move very, very proactively. This is a really great game for you. I, I, and again, item wise, what, what does he get in himself next? Is what, what's the iron pick up of this slot? Did he just get the Scardy still, or, or will he go for something like an MKB? Is he worried about any evasion coming out anytime soon? Hmm. I mean, like I said, uh, it's more likely than not that Tyler gets a butterfly this game. Yes. But, um... Ah, uh, Scardy's still such a really good item on the hero. It's, it's gonna make him so hard to kill. I mean, he's already a, a kind of an impossible point to take down. And look, he just... He doesn't care, he's on his own, he'll go in for the kills. Right. Another kill for you, no. He's, he's out of control. Despite the Echo Saber already providing quite a bit in terms of uh, consistent attacks output, I would still say the Moon Shard is really strong here. Okay. Um, you get build of that Essence Shift so quickly, and uh, all of your opponents are really stat dependent. The the Weaver especially. Like if you keep just railing into them and ste stealing up those stats, giving them to yourself, then uh, it just kind of has a snowball effect in the fights. Oh, there we go. They're ready to find some action, and they've got it. Bringing back the Beast Master, and look, maybe seeing if they can set up for more. They've got eyes on to burning, burning. It'll silence him, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. He's, he's hiding in the trees, but they're hot on his case. And really, at this point, this is... It's borderline disgusting. What's he picked up with the money? Yeah, he's picked up the two orbs, so... Will be going for the Scardy. He's come back here. Uh, he can't stop that, though. So I will get out. But at the same time, the push is coming in from the rest of our GV. As we just saw, OP just finish off the AC on the DK. And it really does feel, yeah, that the, the, the entire momentum of this game is all in the hands of RNG vitality at this stage. CCY? Yeah, going in really hard. You're gonna get Dragon Tailed up while the Slaughter will try to bail him out. It looks like CTY is gonna just have to pop BKB and run. Yeah. At this point, he just doesn't have the damage to do it. He really doesn't. And, you know, Slark's now joined back in, in into the action. He's seeing if he can catch any of the stragglers out. He's gonna make a move from the sidelines. He may even find something. He's just going to tease them away, and as we see, VG just... They're respecting the power of IGV now, they're just backing right up. And it was... He, he did go BKB on the on the Weaver. So, the damage output is just not going to be there. And I look at this now, he might even be close to GG. I mean, this, this Slark is absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, he's got a full Scott, he's sitting yeah. on the Courier, and he's like, Yeah, I don't... He do not even need it! That later. Yeah, that's my backup item. Right now, I'm just seeing an opportunity to go right in. If Ichi oh, Gaming man. are willing to fight outside their base, then hell yeah, they're gonna take that fight. IGV running a train over, and the Bloodstone Timber has to buy back. That's, yeah, that's that's never a good sign. And down to five charges as well, CTY. I they, mean, they just, they fought yeah. with, with a quarter of Slark's net worth on the Courier. And he still trashed them. And they get a free buyback off the Timber saw. Absolutely insane. Let's see if Yuna wants to go for any kind of greedy plays. He's... You know, this stage is 14 1 4. And it really just feels. The fact that the, the, the Weaver was felt to, to force into a position where he bought the BKB, that's, that's, that's kind of, you know, thrown in the towel, in a sense. BKB Lincolns. How'd you kill the Slark? Where's the damage? Mm. Avoid the Slark. It seems like this is the only option. They're going to try to just pick off a support here. Uh, Glimpse obviously going to enable the, the kill if they just catch sight of them. Um, but actually, with the Slark here, he's going to pop the Dark Pack very early. And again, on the roar, pops the BKB and starts going to town. They'll put everything they can in, but in July already gets off the lasso. The Weaver might time lapse out, but that is a dieback on the Timber. 
Yeah, and, and they're just moving in for more. Triple kill this time. It's going to be DK taking the goal. Ultra kill, in fact. GG. It really is just all over just like that. And I think, you know, before these these two games, you were talking about IG Vitality. And I guess this is just the... Mm -hmm. This is what you expected from them. Yeah, yeah. and the, the funny thing is if uh, viewers stop watching after they saw the IGB match versus yes. C-Deck and somebody else this. picked up the stream that year, they're going to see a completely different team. They're going to have a completely different experience and outlook on what this team is capable of because it's just the context of the game. If IGV can get out of the laning stage and start actually putting their foot forward with some farm behind them, these guys can fight, sock it to them. They can fight up with the rest of them. And it's very impressive how quickly they're able to do it too. From a 24 minute stomp involving a 700 GPM clinks against IGV to then taking down Vici Gaming in 30 minutes. What a wild ride this qualifier has become here for the TI6 Chinese qualifier. I, I think it just goes to show the region, you know, this is a region to watch because you just, you don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You really don't. But every team can show up in a, in a one game series and, and in absolute style as well. Incredible play from, from you know, and the team at 14-1-7 on the Slark and, and the backup of the player was there. And uh, we've got more Chinese action coming around. Do we know what the next series is? Uh, um, involves Wings. Uh, wings. So it should be pretty interesting there. Yes, Wings are yeah, never a team that fails to impress in terms of uh, a fun. Yeah, it might even be Vici Gaming versus Wings. And if that's the case, okay. oh my gosh, is that going to be a fun match? That's going to be a good match indeed. So don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. More Chinese action coming right around the corner on this channel. Don't go anywhere.